real meaning of some of these Buddhist symbols. These symbols indicate certain incidents and history and the Dhamma and the nature to express the Buddhist concept on various subjects. So when you take the first item, not the first item, let us start from here. Pagoda. What is this word? Do you know the meaning of this word? Hmm? This is not a Pali or Sanskrit word. Few hundred years ago we started this word. Formerly we have never heard. Pali word is Chetya and the Sanskrit word is Chaitya. When you read Pali book, you can see Chaitya everywhere. Same word in Sanskrit, we use Chaitya. Pagoda is actually a Portuguese word. The original, the Portuguese word is Pagote. The meaning is doom. After that, we started to use this word to introduce Buddhist deity. So many people know this word rather than Chaitya or Chaitya, especially Sedagon Pagoda in Burma. Now they use this word Pagoda. But this is, actually speaking, this is not a Buddhist symbol, because many people do not know the history. When you observe this very carefully, this so-called Buddhist pagoda and the mosque, a Hindu temple and a church building. There you can see similarities, especially this pagoda and mosque. Those two are very close. Then how this one was originated? So according to our knowledge, this symbol was originated in India and we do not know how many thousands of years ago. When you read Mahaparinibbana Sutta, when the Buddha started his journey to go to Kusinara, on the way he has pointed out various chetiyas to his disciples. Now that clearly shows the chetiyas or the pagoda were very common in India at that time as a place of worship. Then how did they start? They have started to erect this chetya or pagoda to enshrine the ashes or the relics of the kings or the emperors or religious people. After enshrining, they started to erect this pagoda. But the meaning of the shape is very important here. There are four stages. This one, this one, 
this one and this one. Four stages. And this is the way. And ashes they bury here. The meaning of these four stages is Patavi, Apo, Tejo, Vayo. Do you know the meaning? Four elements. Patavi, uh, this is Patavi, earth or solidity. Any solid thing we can introduce as Patavi. Apo. What is Apo? Not Apo. <laughs> Hmm? Water, solidity, in simple language, bubble. Uh, this is water. Tejo, heat, heat energy. Vayo, what is Vayo? Wind or motion. Uh, these are the four elements. So to indicate for these four elements, and they have erected this one by introducing a shape. Most of them are decorations here and there. Then what is the meaning? When a person dies, the elements of the body again absorbs into the same element. Here we have four elements. So after our death, all these four elements absorb into the existing same element. Uh, this is called dissolution or disintegration. So this is the significance of pagoda. So we bury the ashes here and regard this portion as the earth. And after that, the solidity <coughs> we introduce as a bubble. Uh, this is the pagoda. This part of the pagoda is a bubble. And the heat energy goes up. Temperature goes up. After that, the wind completely dissolve all the other elements. And after that we cannot see a person or a physical body, but never disappear all the elements. But they have learned only that much, because in the ancient philosophy also they say, after our death, all the four elements again absorb into the same element, and that is the end of our life. As at that time they had no knowledge about the human consciousness or the mental energy. So after this dissolution of the elements, the existing mental energy or the consciousness again join with the existing elements. Now uh, they could not understand it. Only Buddhism or the Buddha has introduced it. Uh, that is how another life or another existence takes place after our death. That departed mental energy is responsible for that, but not the existing elements of the body. So when the disciples ask, especially Ananda, what to do with his dead body, uh, then the Buddha has given instruction. So after my death, you can wrap my body with so many layers of 
clothes and cremate. After that, collect all the ashes or the relics and bury them and erect a pagoda. And the Buddha has given this advice. Then he asked for what purpose? For people to remember this religious teacher who has served the whole mankind, who has given a wonderful message for us to live peacefully and to find out our salvation. So <coughs> when they visit this place, they can recall and they develop devotion and confidence and courage and inspire for them to follow this religious teacher. Now that is the idea of erecting a pagoda or the chaitya in a temple. Later, all the others, Hindus, actually they have started this. But they had only that knowledge, only about four elements at that time. And Muslims and Christian church, when you analyze, you can see, if you reduce this part and this way, uh, again if you put the cross here, uh, then it will become church. Originated from the same place. Now uh, this is the significance of pagoda. Now let us come to this one. This is called Dhamma Chakra Pali. Dharma Chakra Sanskrit. You can use either. So, one particular discourse or the first sermon of the Buddha that he delivered is Saranath Isipatana Dhanaras. Uh, is known as Dhamma Chakra Sutra. Dhamma means law. Chakra means wheel. Wheel of the law. So the meaning of this word is wheel of the law. The word Dhamma carries so many meanings. Dhamma or Dharma. The first meaning is law. Uh, not a man-made law, natural law. Man cannot create natural law and man cannot change or destroy natural law. So we are referring to this natural law. Birth is natural. Sicknesses are natural. Decaying is natural. Death is natural. Suffering is natural. Worries and miseries and problems are natural. Uh, all these are dharma. So if we can understand this, that is more than enough to know what the dharma is. The things that we cannot stop, that we cannot change, natural occurrences. We pray to the Buddha, we pray to God, we pray to some other supernatural living beings, asking the favors, asking them to stop these things. But they are also subject to same natural law. So how can they stop? They also have to face death. Then, some other meaning. Nature and Dhamma or natural law give the same meaning. Another meaning is <coughs> justice, peace. Because those who follow this Dhamma experience or practice justice, 
and experience peace. Can avoid so many problems. By knowing what this dharma is. Later, during Emperor Asoka's time, that means two hundred and twenty, twenty-four or twenty-six, I cannot remember exactly, after the passing away of the Buddha. So when he wanted to introduce Buddhism all over the country, uh, he introduced this as a symbol, as a Buddhist symbol. Those days in India there were many religions, even today also we can find so many, to recognize the Buddhist community. The Emperor Asoka tried to introduce this for Buddhists to wear, just like cross by a Christian. Uh, that is how this has become a Buddhist symbol. Then the, the meaning of the spoke, and these things are decoration. This artistic impression, no meaning. Only this spoke. There are four wheels, six wheels, eight wheels, not wheels, and spoke. Then uh, twelve, sixteen, and thirty-two. So far they have discovered. The meaning, four spokes indicate the four noble truths. That's all. The sixth spoke wheel indicates the six senses. What are the six senses? These five and the mind. Six senses. Eight spokes one is very famous. Many people use eight for eight, eightfold noble paths. Eightfold noble paths. One path, but eight items. It's called eightfold noble path. And what are those eight paths? Not eight paths actually, eight items. Only one part. What are those eight items? Hmm? Samma Vitti, Samma Sankapha, Samma Vacha, Samma Kammanta, Samma Ajiva, Samma Vayama, Samma Sati, Samma Samadhi. Eight. Meaning? Hmm. Right? Samadhi. What is Samadhi? Right? Right understand. We have to start with right understand. If our understanding is wrong, everything goes wrong. If we maintain wrong concept, wrong attitude, wrong belief to practice a religion, we won't be able to experience the good result. Right understand. That is why we are trying to learn. If not, we can maintain all sort of belief what others maintain is according to their health. But we cannot satisfy with mere belief or concept. We want to know. Now this is called right understand. Sammaditti samma sankapta. What is the meaning? We say right thoughts. What is right thoughts? We must know the nature of thoughts that which appear in our mind. We never concentrate on our thoughts. When <coughs> anger, cruelty, jealousy appear in our mind, 
Now, if you can understand, now there is anger in my mind, there is jealousy in my mind. This is not a good attitude. This can create lot of problems and suffering. Therefore, I must try not to accommodate such things. Again, good ideas sometimes appear in the bad man's mind also. They also do lot of good deeds. So when certain good thoughts appear in your mind, such as, oh, I must have courage to tolerate this nuisance without creating trouble, without scolding, without beating, without cursing, I must tolerate, I must have patience to face this. It is a good thought. So if you can maintain this, now this is good mental attitude. Right thoughts are based on this act. Now this is Buddhism. Third one, Samma Vacha. Vacha means words. Right, a speech. In simple language, art of talk. You must know how to talk gently without hurting, disturbing others. There are so many ways for us to use all sorts of words. But many of those words that we use disturb others. Now that is the third item. Samma kammanta, right action. Action means by using our physical body we do lot of things for our living, for our protection and to enjoy our life. But some of our actions are very bad, very selfish, very cruel, harmful. By violating all the existing moral, moral thought or discipline, we do so many things, uh, there is no right action. We can see we have to do this for our living, it is not an action. If you hurt others, disturb others for your living, it is not right living, it is only a living. Usually, To enjoy our life within this lifetime, we commit lot of bad things. That is called bad karma or akusala karma. But the idea is to enjoy our life. On the other hand, to enjoy our life in the next birth, we do lot of good deeds by supporting others. But the intention is the same. Understand? You go and rob and kill and disturb others to enjoy your life within this lifetime. You offer dana, you help others and you relieve others' suffering by thinking after your death you can enjoy your life in heaven. Both these beliefs are based on craving. Remember this. If there is no craving in your mind, you never crave for the next life to enjoy, either in heaven or human world or somewhere else. But that craving is not a bad craving. The craving that you develop to enjoy your life within this lifetime by disturbing others, you gain something you really enjoy. But that is called bad karma. In the next life, uh, 
such people have no chance to experience peace and happiness in their life. So the aim of Buddhism is, please remember, now you can see the difference <coughs> between Buddhism and all the other existing religions. The aim of all the other religions is to go to heaven and enjoy life. Eternal, craving is there. The aim of Buddhism is not to go to heaven and enjoy life by knowing heaven is not the ultimate aim or the goal. We have to go beyond by reducing that craving. After that we never experience unsatisfactoriness in our life. Now this is the difference. So, samma-ditta, samma-kamvanta, samma-ajiva, samma-vaya, effort. We have to use some sort of effort, but this is not actually a physical effort, mental. It's a very big battle. What is this battle? When you come to know certain evil thoughts appear in your mind, by developing your mindfulness you realize certain evil thoughts appear. Immediately you use your full effort to calm or to bring down that particular evil thought without allowing that evil thought to create or to influence the mind to do certain bad things. Uh, that is called real effort. Again, certain good thoughts appear, immediately disappear. You don't know to develop. So when you come to know some good thoughts appear in your mind, uh, use this effort to maintain nurture, support this thought, cultivate. Later you can do a lot of good things. <coughs> Again, <coughs> the other aspect. Uh, still there are certain evil thoughts uh, that which never appear in your mind. But there is no guarantee such evil thoughts never appear. So by realizing this, you must know how to guard your mind without allowing such evil thoughts to appear in your mind. Guard your mind. Here you can see the, the beauty or the advantage of meditation is to guard this mind without allowing all those evil thoughts to come and disturb the mind. Even for five minutes, if you can do this. Again, Certain good thoughts also not yet appear. But when you look at others, there are some who have developed. And then try to develop such good thoughts in your mind also. Use your effort. There are four ways for you to develop this effort. That is the meaning of right effort. And then samma sati. Sati means mindfulness by fixing our mind on one particular object without allowing our mind to jump here and there and with